Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, y'all. Want me to pray? Uh, God, what a what a moment. This is so enjoyable. This is work. And um, yeah, I got to just have a, just a moment of gratitude to be able to uh, call these guys friends and coworkers and be able to work on stuff like this. And so we ask for your help. Holy Spirit, would you be here? Uh, would you fill all of our work, all of our technicalities? Um, would you be in my own mind, in my heart, in my body, and in my words, Lord, so that we might offer a thought about service that isn't everything but is something? And that might help people well in their journey of practice. And so, um, yeah, so we offer this to you. Would you bless it in the name of Jesus? Amen. We are all becoming someone. In fact, whatever has captured your attention and the things that you find yourself doing the most very much shapes the kind of person that you and I are becoming. For those of us who follow Jesus, we refer to this process as spiritual formation, which is really just a way for us to say that if we wanna become more like Jesus, then we need to do the things that Jesus himself did. And so today, I wanna to talk to you about the practice of service. Now, I would define service as the practice of giving of yourself to meet the needs of other people. Now, Mark, when he described Jesus and the totality of his life, said that the Son of Man, Jesus, came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That is the template of how you and I understand what service is. And then I love this wonderful conversation that Jesus has with his disciples when they're talking about greatness and when they're talking about being first and having positions of leadership and power. And Jesus says, listen, you know how the rest of the world handles their uh, first place, handles their leadership, handles their power. They use their position as a way to lord over other people. And then he says, not so with you, that listen, if you want to be first, if you want to be great, then you must become a servant of all. A servant of all. I love that Jesus doesn't dismiss being great. He doesn't even dismiss having positions of power and being in first. He says, but listen, leverage that role. Give of yourself so that you might actually meet the needs of other people with the power that you in fact have. Martin Luther King Jr. in quoting Jesus here said that, listen, everybody can be great because everybody can serve. I love that picture of greatness as it relates to service. Jesus even doubles down later on when he says, in, in the way that you have served the least of these, what you have done unto them, you have done unto me. In other words, anytime you make an effort to serve somebody, to meet their needs, you're not just serving them, you are serving the Lord himself. You are in a way demonstrating that you love God by the way that you love people through serving them. Which is why I think Paul, when he's writing to Christians, goes on to say that, listen, in humility, value others above yourself taking less interest in the things that you care about and taking more of an interest in the things that other people need or have a desire for, right? And the reason why I think we need this so much, especially today, is because all of us, whether you follow Jesus or not, are tempted to value our status over serving people. To the degree that we view our position in life, the, the gifts we have in our lives, and the powers that we hold in our life as ultimately about us and not about the way that we can actually better somebody else's life. And so the goal here in this moment is to consider how your blessings are not necessarily a bad thing, but how are you holding those blessings? Your power that you have right now in life is not a bad thing, but how are you holding that power? The same with your gifts, because the call of Jesus is that we would hold power with compassion. And that is such an issue today where we are uh, suspicious of people in leadership roles. We are suspicious of those with power. And so what an opportunity we have to engage with this practice in a way that we might hold our power, hold our gifts, hold our position in life with a kind of compassion. And here's what I love about service. It has uh, this, this kind of contagiousness to it. Like it's very contagious. So that when you start serving and it touches one part of your body and life, it spreads everywhere. And so if you're anything like me that kind of views the issues of the world as so daunting, there is so much to do. You can't meet every need, but you can meet some needs. And so we need this practice uh, more than we realize. And here's how I think you and I can begin to practice service. First, pray that the Spirit of God would open your eyes to see the needs of people. We are so laser focused on what we have to do or we're very scatterbrained throughout our lives. And so praying simply, Holy Spirit, help me to see the needs of others begins this practice. Secondly, 
ask the people in your life, in what ways can I better be serving you? Uh, when I'm on date night with Ashley, one of the things that we do as an expression of our love and our commitment is we ask that question of each other on date night over a meal. We say, listen, is there anything I can be doing to better serve you? Because often in life, the things we think we're doing that are we think are serving other people aren't translating that way, right? And so to be specific and say, in what ways can I better meet your needs? Let me know, I wanna hear about those things. And then thirdly, as you identify places where people need help, ways where you can be serving, think about what it's going to be, uh, uh, what, what it's, what it's gonna call for you to give up. Like, what are you gonna have to sacrifice? What time is going to have to come out of you? What energy is going to have to come out of you? And know that in doing so, you not only are meeting a need, but listen now, you're discovering your true self. Jesus said himself, anyone who desires to actually lose their life will in fact find it. And so there's something beautiful about discovering who you truly are as you serve people. And so for those of you who call Sandals Church your home, I want you to seriously consider this practice on a weekly basis with your community, with your church family. What are the ways that you can better be serving God's community and God's family as a demonstration of your uh, love for him and your love for people? And to remember this ultimately is in fact a practice. So give yourself grace. You can't meet every need, but you can meet some needs. And what an opportunity we have to demonstrate the greatest servant of all in, in the way that we follow Jesus, worship him by the way that we decide to serve other people. The man himself on, on the fateful night that he was betrayed and then later crucified, the one who holds the universe together, we're told, wrapped himself in a towel, gone on his knees and washed the feet of the people he was teaching and leading. This is the picture of Jesus and we can't worship a servant and not become servants ourselves. Grace and peace.